Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm excited to bring you a review for the new Marvel Legends Bone Breaker Build-A-Figure Wave, Siren. Siren is the first figure that I've obtained out of this new wave because, oddly enough, they seem to be showing up piecemeal where a lot of stores are getting solid cases of individual characters. I've seen a lot of Siren cases, a lot of Vulcan, I've seen a lot of Wolverine cases. Uh, I don't know why they're doing that, but a lot of stores are doing that. Like Targets are doing it, GameStops are doing it. So you know, I've seen Sabertooth cases too. I don't know what's going on with that. It's really weird because when you have you know a Build-A-Figure wave, you want all the different parts of that figure to be pretty evenly available. So, again, not really sure what's going on with that. And it does mean that, unlike most of the waves that I've picked up, I'm not going to be picking this wave up all in one go, which means the reviews probably won't be in, you know, the numerical order listed on the box. That all being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Siren's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll get a quick look at the Build-A-Figure piece, and then we'll see Siren herself, we'll check out her posability, her accessories, as usual, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Siren comes in your standard Marvel Legends packaging. You get your Bone Breaker call out up here. You get the standard X-Men logo with her name and the color Marvel Siren, because I guess it's too generic of a name to, you know, leave without the prefix. Inside the window, you can see a big piece of tread work, which makes up part of Bone Breaker's lower body. And then we see Siren herself. She's got a soft goods uh, little cape area. I'm not really sure what you call it. Just the cloth that drapes around her arms. And she does come with two alternate open hands. On the side, you get this really nice artwork of the character doing her you know, signature scream. And then here we get what appears to be the same artwork, just reversed. And you can see much more of the character. Now, one thing I keep hearing about this toy, you know, one criticism, and I think it's a valid one, is that she doesn't come with any head that's actually screaming. And when her whole thing is a sonic scream, like, why would you not have at least one head that does it? And if having a separate head was too much over budget, then make it the default one, because that's that's her whole thing. It'd be like releasing a Wolverine without his claws. It's, it's an odd choice, and I don't know why they did that. Right over here on the right, we can see Siren's name along with her flavor text. And that says, Inheriting her mutant sonic scream from her father, Banshee, and raised by her criminal uncle, Black Tom Cassidy, Teresa Cassidy forges her own heroic path with X-Factor as Siren. Now, it's pretty interesting and fortuitous, as I actually just picked up Black Tom the same day I picked her up. So, I have something for a group shot. Look at that. Right down here, we get our render of Bonebreaker, along with the layout of, you know, what part comes with what figure. And then we get our cross cells. We get Wolverine, who's our anchor figure. And we get this one, Siren. So I'm not too far off in the order so far. We get Havoc, Vulcan, Maggot, Darwin, and then lastly, Sabretooth. So these are all, or I shouldn't say all, but most of these figures are either characters that haven't been done before, or they've been done in pretty significantly different forms or outfits. Um, the one that really doesn't follow that is Wolverine, because he still just looks like a standard Wolverine with some very small tweaks. Well, these other guys, though, are fairly unique to this release, so I appreciate that. Like when your new wave of figures can kind of stand on its own and not feel like a complete rehash. So yeah, that's the box. Really like the artwork. Just very, very disappointed by the lack of a screaming head. It's just an odd, odd omission. You know they had to have at least been conscious of it. Like, I'm sure it was brought up in the planning stage at some point, so I wonder what their reasoning was for not including that. Okay, here's Siren out of the box. And first, let's take a look at this big old Build-A-Figure piece. So this would be the left half of the tank that forms the bottom half of Bone Breaker. And you can see it's, you know, I mean, it's a pretty hefty thing we got going on here. It's got a lot of surface detailing. You can see all sorts of cracks and nicks, gouges, all that stuff. You got some silver paint here to show, you know, basically that the green paint has been scratched off of the tank. I mean, tons and tons of sculpted detail on this thing. All these little switches and stuff. This diamond plate here. It looks great. Uh, we have, seems to be like a soft plastic or rubber treading. It doesn't turn, but it does look cool. And then, very unexpected level of detail. You got this like hatch on the bottom and even what appears to be some sort of like 
damage from a munition that hit the bottom of it. I mean, who sculpts details into the bottom of a tank, you know? Like, that's pretty awesome. I really gotta say, I'm very impressed with how this turned out. And it's only half the tank, so, you know, Bonebreaker, I didn't really fathom just how big he was gonna be, but you figure, you, know, you double this, that's gonna be the bottom of the figure, and then you got, like, the top of him coming out. I'm pretty impressed. I like what I see there. Right now, as far as Siren, she is, you know, not very complicated. Your standard female type figure. I love the hair that they sculpted on her, how it's kind of flowing in the wind. You actually surprisingly don't see that, you know, very often, at least not to this extent. Usually it's, you know, fairly just kind of flat up against the body. And I already mentioned the soft goods little cape she's got going on here. She's got her uh, hinge and ball joint combo, which is pretty common for Legends. Universal shoulders, bicep swivel, double bend knees, or sorry, knees, <laughs> elbows. And something you may notice, there's no pins in these. So I think, I think this wave, is this the first use of the pin-free uh, elbows and knees there? I don't think I've seen it yet. So this might be the first uh, run of these, which is something Hasbro's been hyping up where you know, normally you got these little plastic pins on both sides of these double joints, and they found a way to get rid of them. Uh, very similar to, like, the uh, Masterverse stuff from uh, He-Man. So, I dig it. It looks really nice and, you know, really helps the, the character look organic and not, like, some sort of robot with pins and stuff sticking out of her. So, I really like that. She's also got her universal wrists, and you can see that the cape is attached both at the shoulders... So basically, you know, the arm plugs into the shoulder socket, like, going through a hole in the cape. And then the same thing with the wrist, too, which we'll see here in a moment. She's also got the ball joint at the top of her torso. No waist swivel, so, you know, pretty typical female body type. I think all this here, like the torso area, is just your standard, right? Uh, same thing, it can't be, like, binary. Pretty solid piece with the two holes in the back. She still retains that. Uh, she's got universal hips, which work pretty well. Thigh swivel, which feels very, very good. It's like the perfect amount of friction. We already talked about the knees, their double bend. Kind of a tight bend, but they'll go. And then your ankle rock and rotation. Now the cuffs around her boots and around her gloves are just separate pieces, as you can see. So like this ankle joint's actually molded in green and painted yellow. So, uh, you know, it's... Good for customization purposes, not having that be just molded onto the arms. Plus, it allows Hasbro to reuse a lot of the limbs and then just slap little cuff pieces on them. So it kind of works for everybody. Like, Hasbro saves some money, you get to more greatly customize your figures. It's one of those rare instances where Hasbro being budget-friendly actually helps the collector. All right, so now let's get a look at these alternate hands. These are really cool. They're like these very dramatic grasping style hands. I really like them. So we'll go ahead and swap them. Now one thing to be aware of is when you pull these old hands off, the cape's gonna come off because there's nothing holding it in there anymore. So you can see there's a little hole in the cape. So you just make sure the post for the new hand goes through that. And here's that cuff I mentioned, right? It can indeed come off if you want it to. So yeah, make sure this post goes through the hole, line it all up. And push it. Let's see. Did I do that wrong? No, I didn't. Just got to rotate a little bit. All right. That's one downside to the way this is connected is you get kind of bunched up in these joints, and it's very, very thin material. It has a very plasticky feel to it. So just be careful. You don't want to accidentally rip it while you know posing or moving around. All right. So that I think looks much cooler really dig the grasping hands it looks like she's letting out a sonic scream which is neat except for the fact as i've mentioned several times she doesn't have a screaming face so it's kind of wasted i mean the face sculpt is fine it looks like her it's good you know a nice smiling face but it really fails to capture siren's abilities like if you don't know who siren is right you're not you have no idea who she is Especially if you don't know the name of this character, you just see this toy standing around. You're going to have no idea what she's supposed to do. Like, you'll see the axe and you'll be like, oh, she looks kind of like an X-Man, kind of reminds me of Rogue. 
what'd she do? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe if she had a screaming face or even better, like some screaming effects, right? Some kind of clear effect or something. Man, that would really work. But uh, as she stands, there's not a lot to hint off what exactly her whole deal is. Okay, now here's a comparison shot with another figure I recently reviewed, and this is the Walgreens exclusive Binary. And the reason I'm comparing these two is to show, you know, kind of what's new and what's different. So the biggest thing these two have in common is the torso. The upper and lower torso pieces are exactly the same. You can even see the you know, holes in the back of Binary, just like Siren here has. And then, as far as I could tell, the only other piece they share are the feet, like just the bottom piece right here, the foot piece. And then I think everything else is different. The arms and legs are obviously different pieces because our Siren figure uses the new pin-free limbs, so that would necessitate they have to be different pieces. Plus, Binary uses the much simpler style of arms without the double uh, elbow joints there, which is like a one solid upper arm piece and then the rotating elbow single piece. Uh, pretty similar to a um, Motu Origins toy. So Siren has much newer styling of, you know, a bicep swivel, which means a separate shoulder piece, a bicep piece, and then a double elbow with a forearm. Now, the shoulder piece is probably not anything new. That probably is the same shoulder piece used for other female characters. But I'm sure the uh, bicep and forearm pieces are new, just like these pieces here. The upper thigh is probably recycled from other generic female body types. And as far as, you know, your inner workings of your knees and your elbows, those are possibly reused and just applied differently with the new style of, you know, part that they have. I'm still not sure exactly how they work compared to the old pin style. I don't know what they do differently to achieve this, you know, better look without the extra bits sticking out. But it does look good. I really got to give them props for stepping it up and making these Legends figures look a lot better. And here is Teresa's uncle, Black Tom Cassidy. Unfortunately, he is the only relative or loved one of Siren that I own, so he's the one that's gonna be here in the group shot. And you may notice I haven't reviewed this toy yet, so I specifically opened him just to be able to do this group shot. So I'm kind of filming these things overlapping each other a little bit. So there will be an eventual review of this guy. I'm not sure if it'll be soon because he's not exactly a high priority review for me. But the intro is at least filmed. So yeah, you can see, you know, you got Teresa and Tom here. And the whole backstory is basically while Teresa's father, Banshee, was away on an Interpol mission, uh, her mother died shortly after giving birth to Teresa, and her father had no idea she even existed. He had no idea his wife was pregnant. So Black Tom actually took her in and didn't tell his brother for years that she was actually his daughter. And, you know, he took Teresa under his wing and introduced her to a life of crime. So she was basically a villainous character from the get-go. And it took her a little while, but she finally realized that, you know, villainy really wasn't for her, and then became a more or less heroic character for the rest of her story arc. So these two do have a pretty interesting history together, and not always as enemies, because at one point she was on Tom's side. And this completes our look at the new Bonebreaker Wave Siren. I do very much like this figure. I think she's doing some really interesting things. I think the hair sculpting is really, really awesome. Like they really went out of their way to just kind of make that pop and stand out. I like the cape and you know the ideas behind it. Could have been maybe a little better executed. I think the material could stand to be a bit more sturdy than it is because it feels very papery and it just, I'm afraid it's gonna rip, like especially at those connection points there. Uh, everything else is great. You know, she has some pretty heavy parts reusage when it comes to the main body, but that's to be expected. I do very, very much like the new pin-free limbs. This is my experience with them. This might be the first time they're used. I, I forget where exactly that was supposed to start. Could have been with this wave. Uh, but I, I really think it helps because, you know, other toy companies have already moved beyond that whole, like, pin through the leg or through the arm design. I mean, Mattel's done it with their Masterverse line. So it really was just a matter of time before, you know, Hasbro got caught up there. And it's very much the toy's benefit. The limbs still feel great, like the joints feel awesome. They work about the same as they always have, which 
does basically mean that sometimes they're perfect and other times you're really gonna exercise them out of the box because they're way too overly tight. But that's no worse than it's ever been, so, you know, all is good, I guess. So yeah, a really good looking figure. Uh, my biggest gripe with her, and I've repeated this a few times, the face. It's a great face sculpt, but it's so plain for, you know, what this character is supposed to be and what she's supposed to do. The fact that you have a character with a sonic scream and she does not have a screaming expression on, you know, the head she comes with or an alternate head or anything. It's such an odd choice. Like, I know they had to cross their minds, right? Like, when they were designing this, they had to be thinking, hey, she's a screaming character. Should we give her a screaming face? And somebody was like, nah. <laughs> nah, forget that noise. Why would we do that? So, yeah, weird choice. Um, with this body type that she has, I don't mind them using it. It looks good overall. I wish they would redo the upper portion or at least create a variant of that upper portion that doesn't have the holes in the back. Because when you have a character that's not utilizing their holes, well now they're just out there for everyone to see. And it really does break the immersion of the figure when you got these big old recesses right in the upper back there. So that's something I wish they would fix, but I don't know if Hasbro plans on doing that anytime soon, if ever. So I'm not gonna, you know, dock the figure too much on it. So yeah, I think it's a really great figure. I love the build a figure piece she comes with. It's really cool looking, and you could tell a lot of love went into designing Bonebreaker, so I really look forward to getting the rest of him. Uh, so yeah, if you can find her at Target or online or you know wherever she starts popping up more frequently, I would pick her up. Siren's a very cool character. She's got a really, really interesting story behind her. And she's just one of the more cool looking figures to be released you know, so far this year. Uh, again, the cape really sells it for me. It's something that makes her very unique and interesting. Of course, that is just my take on this figure, so now I want to know what you all think of Siren. Is she something you plan on picking up? Are you happy with the way she came out, despite her flaws? Or maybe you don't think she has flaws, maybe you think I'm being too critical. Or do you not like this for one reason or the other? Is it the lack of the screaming face? Because I know if there was anything that would, you know, really cancel the deal for me, it's probably that. Is there anything else? You're just not interested in the character? You don't like the way the sculpt came out? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Marvel Legends Bonebreaker Build-A-Figure Wave, Siren. With all that said, I will see you next time.